Yeah. Woo! I feel like it's been a while. It's been a full week. It's kind of weird. But it feels nice. It does feel nice. Like, don't you feel refreshed now? Yeah. You're not like, we don't have to rush into a Thursday. Yeah. Mm. I got, this is my last beer in my fridge. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no is right. Got but, it. you know, there's tons of holiday beer out right there right now, too, though. That's tis the season, baby. Tis the season. All kinds of spicy beers and dark yeah. beers. and mm. I should be getting something. I don't know if they're sending beer or just merch. Mm-hmm. But the boys over at Strikeout Beer received our care package. Oh, nice. Of Yingling Hershey. So I wonder if they're going to send anything back. I think mm. they said they are. Yeah, because they messaged me about that. They're going to send us some local Texas goodies. Ooh. That's going to be fun. We got D- Dina Black watching. Hi, Dina Black. Oh, hi, yeah. Dina. Oh, that's that's your person? Yeah. That's all my hands. Oh. Nice. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Get to watch. It. What are you to an aunt? Does that make you a... A nephew. A nephew. That's what it is. <laughs> that's one of my weakest... Yeah. Attributes as a human being is understanding like family tree things. It's helping mm-hmm. a little bit now these days. Having our daughter, our little baby girl, mm-hmm. is now like I understand that my brother is an uncle and like right. grandma's, grandpa's aunt. So I'm starting to understand all of this stuff now. There you go. Because I didn't grow up around a lot of family. Mm-hmm. So I never really had to worry about those kinds of things. Yeah. And with this wide angle lens, now everyone can see my hands. Normally, I do this the entire show with my hands, but you couldn't see it before. Yeah. Now I'm like gonna be super conscious. I'm, I normally I fidget with my fingers a lot. Everyone's gonna be able to see all of that. They can see everything. You're gonna have to work on that. You're gonna have to fix that. I need some freedom with my hands. Hey, we're four uh, minutes into the show. Yeah, just like that. Four minutes into the award-winning podcast, hard to yeah. believe, I know, the the award-winning podcast on and off the field with Durf and Dylan. Yeah. So much fun. Mm-hmm. You know, we should see last last week's test run of our first ever two-hour show, it went mm-hmm. pretty well, I feel like. Yeah, I think so. We just went barely over two hours, which was kind mm-hmm. of the goal, like kind of hit that two-hour mark. Yep. Made some adjustments this week. I feel mm-hmm. like we should be able to crush it this week. This should be a great show. Yeah. I was worried about Definitely. last week, but <laughs> here we are. <laughs> Round two. Try again. Godspeed. <laughs> I should probably put up a banner. There we go. There we but go. I'm going to throw up a second banner right away, which is flossing. Yeah. Making sure you're flossing, which is follow, like, observe, subscribe, and share to our wonderful award-winning podcast. And Durf can tell you about the details. Who, what, when, where, how, why. Well, the why is just do it because you love us. But he can <laughs> he can answer the rest of them, though. Yeah. Well, we can't forget to tell our listeners that flossing is recommended by 10 out of 10 podcasters. Ah, see, this is a problem we're going to have like, yeah. with a, a weak gap is trying to remember all these things. <laughs> But so, yes, you are correct. 10 out of 10 podcasts are recommending flossing. And you can follow, like, observe, and share on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at On and Off the Field or at OOTF Podcast. And you can subscribe to our YouTube and Twitch channels, which we are currently live on, and where you can find previous episodes and great content. Make sure to rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts so that we know how we're doing and what you like or dislike about the show. And you can find all of these links at onandoffthefield.com along with our fundraising efforts, our sweet merchandise, and to learn more about Dylan, myself, and this award-winning show. Just went over there to check Twitch channel. Yeah, I don't know how the I don't know how the Twitch channel really works. I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the gaming channel's up and running, but that's strictly on Facebook. I'm I, I'm trying to 
watch mm-hmm. other people's Twitch streams to understand how Twitch works. It's a whole it's a uh, whole different world over yeah. there. It's it's kind of scary. I'm just I'm comfortable with Facebook. I'm just going to stay here and oh, yeah. make myself comfy. There you go. Until the next big thing comes out mm-hmm. on Facebook. Yeah. Back in the day, like I, I had MySpace obviously. Mm-hmm. MySpace was where it was at. Everyone loved it. You got to publicly rank your friends one through ten. You got to like have background music on your profile. Mm-hmm. It was it was everything. MySpace was dope, and then Facebook came out, and I didn't I didn't believe it. Back then, I, everyone was like, "Dog, did you make your Facebook account yet?" I was like, no, I didn't make a Facebook account. Why would I make a <laughs> Facebook account? We have we have MySpace. Facebook is gonna fizzle off in like a month or two. And everyone will be back on MySpace. <laughs> I'll never forget those words. <laughs> oh. I wish I remembered my MySpace past. Does MySpace even exist anymore? Like, could you go back and check your profile? Maybe. I, I kind of doubt like, it. But. I feel like people have, like, printed off stuff off their MySpace page recently. Huh. Like, I feel like I've seen that. Like I, I, never, I didn't have a MySpace, so I don't know like, oh. for sure. Because if I did, I probably would go and try and like check it out. But I didn't have that. Like I started with Facebook, so okay, yeah. MySpace yeah. was my my jam. Josh is in the house. Josh, you yeah. Bailey Packers baby. He says they um pack Packers had a good night. Was that yeah, Sunday night did. football? <laughs> I didn't. I I kind of got. I didn't even tune in the game. All right, just I didn't mm-hmm. tune into the game because me and the wife were doing like board game night, fun, have like do whatever kind of night. Yeah. And then so I tuned in, kind of late. It's like okay, let me get my phone open. Let's check the score real quick. I didn't even check the score because the first thing I saw was your message to our group chat that said "Holy blowout." I was like, <laughs> and then I checked the score, and I was like, yeah. Okay, I'm not watching this. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not wasting my night. Right. So yeah. instead, I turned on some Marvel movies. That was much there better use of my time. Uh, Josh had 50 MySpace accounts because because <laughs> he kept forgetting his passwords. Oh. Thank God for the forget your password button where you can reset it these days. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then Lenny Melnick, Giants all the way at four and seven. Very alone possible. at the top. Who would have thought? I feel like that's. I feel like you know, because now you got Danny Dimes with the hamstring injury. Mm-hmm. Who knows how long that'll take to get him back? <sighs> I don't know yeah. who's winning that division. I'm done guessing. I mean, I'm thinking it's either Giants or Washington, but. This is the NFC East we're talking about, so you know yeah. we won't know for sure until after Week 17's over. And if we have a Week 18, it'll be after Week 18's over when the playoffs are set. So, can we do this right now? Let's do this right now, All right. just because we're here. Dang it, Lenny! This is what you've done to us. <laughs> I this think Washington what... and the Giants are tied right now, though. I think Washington's the three lead? and eight. Oh, they are four and seven. They're tied for first, but the Giants have the have the tiebreaker. Lead. Okay, yeah. so let's let's take a look here. We'll start with the Giants, who are in first. Okay, their remaining schedule is the Seahawks, Cardinals, Browns, Ravens, Cowboys. Seahawks, Browns, Ravens, Cowboys. Yeah, Seahawks, Cardinals, Browns, Ravens, Cowboys. One. Yikes. That's brutal. I only see maybe two wins out of that. I mean, I feel like two would be a like a favor. Because you might be able to squeak one out against the Ravens if it's another down week. And then the Cowboys, they could probably win. Well, so I, was thinking the, I was thinking the Cardinals. They could oh, the Cardinals. Okay. So maybe I was, three? Well, just... I was thinking Cardinals and Cowboys would be their best bet. Okay. I, I feel like Cowboys, they should win. And then between the other those those other four games, I give them one more win. Whether All it's right. the Ravens, Browns, Cardinals, whichever one it is. 
So yeah. that would give them a record of six and ten. Mm-hmm. Six and ten. All right, let's move to the next one. Six and ten for the Giants. Someone write that down. Yep. All right, for the Washington football team, we have the Steelers, the 49ers, the Seahawks, Panthers, and Eagles. Uh, I'm going to say get three out of there. I like three because the Panthers and Eagles are very likely wins. Mm-hmm. Because they've already dominated the Eagles. That defensive line can tear apart that Eagles offense. And then the Panthers, depending on where they lie at the end of the season, that's a possible win. And mm-hmm. then they might be able to squeak out the 49ers since they're still pretty beaten up. Yeah. So I, if, if they pull three out of there, I'd be very impressed, which would leave us at seven and nine. Mm-hmm. Even the Seahawks, that defensive front against the Seahawks, pretty bad offensive line. They could they could pull out a miracle there. That's could, not yeah. that's not impossible. So I think between those five games, I think three wins is possible. So let's give them seven and nine. All right. Let's go take a look at the Eagles just for fun. Okay. They have the Packers coming up next week. They have the Saints. And then the Cardinals, Cowboys, and Washington. I, I, I feel like the only one they can get is is the Cowboys. Because if we're given that win to Washington in Week 17, right? Well, what was before the Cowboys? The Cardinals are before the Cowboys. Who? I think Cowboys is probably a good chance. They might squeak out a second win somewhere. If you, get, if you get lucky against the Cardinals, maybe? That Yeah, maybe. But I know, like, the next two weeks aren't, aren't No, the, the Packers and Saints, no, they're done. That, that's going to be... I, so gotta, I, I, I got a mini hot take later, but not very hot. <laughs> I just want to... That's Eagles related. Uh, okay. Okay. Giants will lit, will win the lease if Danny Dimes comes back. I don't believe in Colt McCoy. After they were lucky, they're already up yeah. against the Bengals. Because if they were down against the Bengals and Colt McCoy came in, they would have lost that game. Seven is the magic number. Yeah, I would agree. Which is where we have Washington right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Philly losing the next two games for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. And then let's just check in on Dallas, who is fourth in the NFC East with three and eight. Ravens, Bengals, 49ers, Eagles, Giants. That's a favorable schedule. Yeah. Out of all four that we've just reviewed, the Cowboys are looking mighty fine. They're going to need four out of those five, though, to probably have a chance of taking the division. Yeah, they're going to need three to go into a weird tie with Washington. But well, Washington won lose. both games. Yeah, they. Yep. Yeah, that's so they need four. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, they need four out of five, which is possible based on the schedule. It is because it's favorable. So Ravens, Bengals, 49ers, Eagles, Giants. I don't know. That could that could just go either way because they looked great against Minnesota. Right. And then they get kind of dumped on by Washington on Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Who, because no one knows what this team is doing. Um, yeah. I think you have a, a good solid three there. I would agree. It's possible. They're definitely not in control. Of their, they are in control of their own destiny, but in reality, they're not. I mean, they would need likely, Washington to lose more. Right, and most likely we're only getting one team out of this division for the playoffs. Oh, yeah. Even though we have an expanded playoff. Yeah, there's no way any year. other team is getting that. Yeah, it's just one out of the NFC East. And they will be the fourth seed. I'm going to say the Cowboys are only able to get three out of here. Okay. I say they can beat the Bengals, and then they take down the Eagles and Giants to end the end the season, but it's not enough to get them in the playoffs. So they'll end up at six and ten. Yep. The Giants will be six and ten. The Eagles are going to end up. What are they now? Four, Three. four, eleven, and one. 
It's something like that, yeah. What are they now? Three three seven and one, I think. Or three, three eight seven. and one. Three I think they're three seven and one, yeah. Oh yeah, I think so too. So then I'm looking at like five, ten, and one. Okay. That makes sense too. That's pushing it, but yeah. Yeah, either either one of those is likely for them. Tough because they, they the Packers and Saints are two losses, and it's just a matter of if the Cardinals, mm. Cowboys, and Washington there. Who? So we, I think, our consensus right now is that Washington will be winning this division. Yep. With how their season began and everything going on, mm-hmm. we we were sitting here thinking Washington could be that other team that's maybe gets one win on the season and competing with the jets for the first overall pick <laughs> could be yeah. winning the division. What a crazy world we live in. That's 2020 for you. How's your fantasy week go? Uh, not great. I lost. It's Don't the week. I'm not, pretty sure I did too. The week's not over, but I know I lost cause I ran out of points. Ran out you of ran, players. Ran out of players. <laughs> I just didn't get some performance out of some players I was leaning on a little bit more than I should have probably. You know, I, my bench didn't get a lot of points, but yeah, it's uh, that's okay. I just got to get right for the playoffs coming up soon. So, yeah, I got pounded into the dirt, one fifty eight to one hundred seven. Ouch. Yeah, even my bench did bad. It wouldn't matter who I put in the game. Ezekiel Elliott two points, Josh Jacobs three points, Cooper Cup five points. Yeah, that's that's not going to get her done. No, that's not going to get her done, folks. My fantasy season is horrendous this whole this whole year for all three of my teams. <laughs> it's years like this that make me go, I'm never playing again. But I'll probably be playing again next. And then year. August comes around, and I'm like, hey, you want to play football? Exactly. <laughs> I, the fantasy football league for the podcast, I'll probably keep participating in, but. Everything else, I'll, I'll probably end up dropping out of because I'm just I'm just sick of this. Yeah, had Mahomes and Tyreek Hill on the same squad. Oh, that's sexy. That that's really good. is. That's good stuff. With Tyreek Hill with like 203 yards and two touchdowns in the first quarter. I think he had like what 50 points or something on the yeah on the game. Like the most something since- nuts. By like oh seven or something, the most by a single player. So I'm but looking at my, of... yeah, I'm looking at our, the league right now for us. For I only scored seventy five points this week. Ooh, and I lost by fourteen. So you had a chance. The other person I didn't do a, that great either. Yeah, I had a chance, but Kyler Murray let me down. Michael Pittman Ooh. Jr. let me down. Ooh. Clyde Edwards, Elair let me Elair. down. Elair. Uh. Yes. I shouldn't have started Jared Cook because, you know, Jason Hill doesn't, doesn't throw the ball. So I did the same thing because I had Mark Andrews as my starter, but my only other mm-hmm. option was Jared Cook for a tight end. So I was like, ah, let's just throw him in there. And yeah. then I kind of forgot. Yeah. That, <laughs> I kind of forgot the scenario over there <laughs> with the Saints. I did leave 18 points on the on the bench with Debo Samuel. So oh, no. I was like, you know, he's just coming back. I'm going to let him sit on the bench for a week. But You did good. Yeah, so that's going to be – he's going to be a player I'm going to need for the playoffs, I can tell you that right now. So, Yeah, he's really the only receiving threat that San Francisco has, so mm-hmm. they're going to use him a lot, which they did, and they, he performed well. I was impressed, especially yeah. just coming back from injury. All right. Let's tackle some NFL news before we, uh, you know, get off on something else. <laughs> get too I, far off the rails. I blame Lenny Melnick. <laughs> For getting us off on that tangent, but we're informing our listeners of what we are, what we're thinking for the yes. NFL division. So that's good true. info. That's kind of like its own segment in itself. We recap the NFC least. Yeah, and Washington will be winning the division. Yep, because the Giants' schedule moving forward is tough, and they might mm-hmm. not even have Danny Dimes. All right, so the NFL with all of this <clears throat> rescheduling mess that's happening mm-hmm. obviously everyone knows that Steelers and Ravens is being planned to play Wednesday at 3 40 3 40 p.m mm-hmm. people will be at work I don't that okay fine <laughs> are there any games tonight no it, okay. the, the Steelers Ravens game would have been tonight 
until it got pushed to tomorrow. Okay. So, like, here, it's, like, before some people get out of work. But on the West Coast, that's a lunchtime game. Oh, God. Game. Be, <laughs> you'd be that's watching a o'clock game. <laughs> NFL football during your lunch break. On a Wednesday. This is what we've come to. I've accidentally <laughs> kicked the wire. Of, oh, what's happening? Oh, what are you doing over oh, there? Oh, God. I, I kicked the wire of the webcam. It just started wiggling. Just need some adjustments. Yikes. A lot of adjustments. Uh, so, along with that... The NFL mm-hmm. got done announcing their Saturday triple header for week 16. The Bucks at the Lions at 1 p.m. Why are the Lions ending up in all these primetime slots? That's a terrible choice of a game. What are we doing with our lives? Like, granted, it's the 1 p.m. game. Kind of like how the Lions go first on Thanksgiving. We'll just get that out of the way. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like Bucks Lions 1 p.m. on Saturday. We'll get that out of the way mm-hmm. on NFL Network. 49ers yep. at the Cardinals. That's a solid game. Yeah. Uh, 4 30 p.m. That's not going to be on Amazon Prime Video and Twitch. Yeah. Twitch. That's an Twitch gonna getting into out, a football game. I'm gonna figure out how to I'm gonna have to figure out how to use Twitch because I'm not paying for <laughs> Amazon Prime. <laughs> <laughs> we already have it, so I don't think we pay for Amazon Prime. I think someone else does. Yeah. I don't even, I don't even know. Dolphins at the Raiders is our third game at 8.15 at night on NFL Network. So you say it out loud, Dolphins at Raiders, and it doesn't sound like a great matchup. And then you think about it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Tua may be playing at the end of the season, possibly trying to make a playoff push for his Dolphins. Yep. And then the Raiders, they might be trying to fight for, I mean, if either of these teams are fighting for a wild card spot at that point, Kind of the same as the 49ers and Cardinals. Yeah. You know, this could be a huge wild card game if they're trying to push for that seventh or sixth seed. Mm-hmm. I like it. Yeah. I mean, it's good after it's good four o'clock and eight o'clock game. It's just that one yeah. o'clock game. <laughs> the one o'clock I'll be doing something terrible, else. Terrible. And it's probably got picked because it was the Bucks. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. I yeah, I would agree. That's sad. Bucks at the Lions. I hate the mm-hmm. Lions so much. <laughs> but that's it that's it for that all games will be broadcast on local stations as well naturally mm-hmm. who are the seahawks playing week 16 i think that's either the the Ra- i think it's the rams week 16 for the seahawks that would have been a great game put that in the one not. o'clock slot on a saturday there you go come on nfl it's probably some tv deal that they have they have to give them the Bucks and Lions. Probably something like that, yeah. But I mean, the, the Seahawks were scheduled though for Week 16. Like these are the games that they oh. they knew they're playing Week 16. Same with Week 15 we had last week. Ah, when they flex were, it out. They, hey, <laughs> you never know. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? The San Francisco 49ers are will actually be playing their next two home games which are against the Bills and the Washington football team at Cardinals State Farm Stadium in Arizona. This is because of some new restrictions in Santa Clara County where Levi Stadium resides. Is it still Levi Stadium? Is that what it's called currently? That's the new one, yeah. Oh, okay. I thought that was the old one for some reason. No, the old one was Candlestick, That's wasn't it? That's Candlestick, yeah. I thought they changed it again for some reason. No, now they're the, they're the stadium for jeans. The stadium for jeans. And the Seahawks are the stadium for technology. Lumen Field. Yeah. I hate that. I still hate it. <laughs> and every single Seahawks fan that I've seen comment about it hates it. Nobody yeah. is excited about <laughs> Lumen Field. <sighs> That's interesting, though. They couldn't, I guess you couldn't find anything local. It's not like they could just move down to the local high school and play there. <laughs> it's the entire right. county. So they had to, they had to legit get out of town. Literally. Yeah. I'm surprised they couldn't figure out something with Los Angeles as a possibility. But, you know, there's already two teams there, so it may have been just crowded for them yeah. to kind of the, the logistics in that. Uh, you know, I think maybe Oakland has a, you know, Oakland or San Diego might have a, a viable stadium still to use. Some people said San Diego. Go back to the old Charger so, Stadium. That's what that's that I was mean, a big option. Who knows how what those stadiums are like? I mean, I'm assuming they're still kind of up capped and maintained for you know high school sports, possibly. But you know, at least uh, they worked without worked out with the Cardinals, and the Cardinals were 
more than or willing to let them come to Arizona practice near this or in the in the state and then play at their uh, stadium. So, yeah, I find that funny. Just the fact that it's division rivals as well. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> excuse me, I know we hate each other and we have to play each other twice a year, and it's a huge like kind of rival thing. Mm-hmm. But can we borrow your stadium? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, so the 49ers play in that stadium for week 13 and 14. And then I believe 16, they're back yeah. there again for the Cardinals. Actually playing the team that plays there. And then I believe... So is that considered a home game? <laughs> technically, it's a home game for the Cardinals, but it could feel like a home game for the 49ers after this yeah. these next couple of weeks. That's and then I know we... Road game. Week 17, I believe, is supposed to be a home game for them. Not sure if that's going to stay in Arizona or they'll be able to go back to Levi Stadium. Yeah, who knows by then. That's, what, four or five weeks away? Yeah. Yeah, who knows? Especially especially uh, Californian government. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit more careful than other states, put it that yeah. way. Uh, and then the Lions have fired... Head coach Matt Patricia and the GM Bob Quinn. Finally, you can mm-hmm. fire as many head coaches as you want, but man, Bob Quinn needed to go as well. <laughs> Who's the last person they've drafted that's been a success? And GMs have a lot of say when it that, that's like their one job a year. Like bringing in free yeah. agents is another part of their job, but the draft is like where they make their money. And that's why John Schneider is such a big deal in the GM world because the Seahawks drafted so well a long time ago. They haven't drafted well recently, so <laughs> but that's another story. Back when they drafted, you know, the whole Legion of Boom and Russell Wilson deal, that was big. Mm-hmm. But you know, Bob Quinn hasn't drafted a quality player in in years. And then th- this really just kind of brought up two different questions. Mm-hmm. The first one was, do they bring Matthew Stafford with the new regime? Whoever they bring in as a head coach. Some people brought up Jim Caldwell's name again. Like, just let the man <laughs> die in peace. Like, why you got to bring Jim back into this? <laughs> Leave him alone. Oh. Yeah, they, they brought up his name to be coming back. I, I haven't really heard any other names except that. I, I'm mm-hmm. sure this late in the season, you're not going to be bringing in a head coach. You're just going to throw an interim at it and say, Godspeed. Right. Um, but do they bring Matthew Stafford with them? They just signed him to an extension, I believe, last year. I'm not sure what the cap hit is, but are you going to use him as your future? All the injuries, the money, or is it time to really just let go? I, I feel like the answer is pretty easy on this. Yeah. But he's done so much for you. Kind of. He's been like the one solid piece of your offense. Right. So I I, th- I think they bring Stafford with them, with the new regime, but he's, he plays the bridge quarterback role now. It's not, you're not coming into the league season saying, Oh, Matthew Stafford's going to be our guy. Like he's going to, he, he can get it done. We can win championships with this team with Matt Stafford at quarterback. That's not going to happen. He's he they're going to say that cuz you know they can't talk they don't talk bad about the guy at a press conference. Okay. Not on purpose. But uh he, he's going to take he's going to take over their bridge quarterback role and depending on where the Lions are going to fall in this the first round for next year, look at them taking a rookie quarterback. They can you know they're going to need a replacement, you know, Matt Stafford's getting up there in age. Oh, I can't tell you how many wins the Lions have because it's probably not very many. That's what I'm looking up right now. I'm thinking that they're going to be in the, at least in the top five. Oh, they're four and seven right now. Really? Yeah. They, they've managed to not be completely terrible. Okay. That's not really a good thing for them. No. So you, I still think it's top five, top ten looking at, at the top worst. Five. Yeah. They're still looking around. Okay, maybe top eight. Okay. Because you got Six, you got seven, yeah. the Cowboys at three and eight, and then you got yeah. the Chargers at three and eight, Jacksonville, Bengals, and Jets ahead of them right now. So if okay. they lose out the rest of the season, they could be looking at top five. But right now, they're probably sitting around you know six, seven, eight. So they they might be able to get a first round quarterback depending on how the draft class 
shapes up after the college football season because, you know, we have two quarterbacks now from the college that we already know. We already knew last year we're going to be first-round picks. I would think they're going to try and take quarterback, you know, and you go, hopefully the later rounds they can pick up some more more good value picks for the team and just help that grow and, you know, take a stance on a direction you want to go in, follow that process, and and go with a with the right head coach because I Patriots 2.0 did not work at all. Oh no, no, that was a complete dumpster fire. And you can just add Matt Patricia to the long list of former Bill Belichick assistant coaches that flopped when they branched out on their own. Hey, maybe we'll get Patriots 3.0 when Josh McDaniels goes there. Ooh, Never he's gonna know. he's got to go somewhere. He's how he's many not years is he going to flake out on a head coaching job? He's not going to get the Patriots job no matter how many times they keep telling him because Bill Belichick's not going anywhere until Steve Belichick's ready to take over. Right. It's going to be a family tradition now to coach the Patriots. That's a crappy tradition. It is a <laughs> like, you, like, you know how normally like the owners of NFL teams kind of hand off to their kids. And it's up to yeah. the kids if they want to sell off the team or not. Maybe like so they'll keep the tradition going. Now it's now it's head coaches. Uh, you got the Belichick family's gonna be running this team forever until Kraft dies. <laughs> How many kids yeah. does Robert Kraft have? Maybe it'll be a Belichick Kraft reign for the next fifty years. <laughs> oh boy. Yikes. Is that a good or a bad thing? Who knows? It's not yeah. it's not good for Bills fans, maybe. Nah, this year it's pretty good for Bills fans. Oh, it worked out this year. <laughs> Talk about the epic collapse. Yeah, because you can't even say, you know, you know, early in the season. Now we're off topic again. You know, early in the season, people kept saying as soon as the Patriots won and the Bucks lost or the Bucks lost, Bucks won and the Patriots lost. Mm-hmm. It's, the first word out of everyone's mouth was like, oh, Bill, Bill needed Tom Brady or oh, Tom Brady needed Bill. Both teams suck. <laughs> Pretty much. Both teams are struggling mightily right now. They have their moments. The mm-hmm. Patriots won on a last-second field goal against the Cardinals. Mm-hmm. The Buccaneers have had a couple of blowout wins, but they've also had their fair share of blowout losses. Mm-hmm. The, both teams don't know what they're doing right now. So does does Bill need Tom? Does Tom need Bill? Probably not. They're both running new teams this year. So mm-hmm. it's just – I think it turned out how we kind of expected almost. I thought the Bucks would be better than this. This is kind of just sad. Yeah. But it's sad. It is sad. My second question of the head coaching one was mm-hmm. like whose seat? Whose seat is extremely hot? Let's take Adam Gase out of the equation. Because we know that he's burning up on that seat. Like he's he's already gone. He's been ejected, but he's like <laughs> just kind of just his spirit is lingering. <laughs> now I have a top three coaches. Okay. On the hot seats right now. Do you mm-hmm. have a top three coaches on your hot seats? Or at least kind of just like one, two, maybe three others that sh- probably should or might get ejected once the season has ended. Oh, uh, I think I, got, I have three. Yeah. Okay. I just had to think about it. But yeah, I have three. Yeah, I kind of put you on the spot there. All good. I had two, and then I was like, I had to think about a third one, but we're good. Yeah, I have two that I've been preaching all year, and now I have a third one. But who are your three? So my three, uh, Doug Marone. Oh, yeah. For the Jaguars, that's they're going to clean house. I'm pretty sure down there because it's not looking good. You know, they're playing the quarterback carousel. They already, they already fired their GM. Yeah, I kind of forgot Doug Marone was even still down there. So. Yeah, he's get, he's on he's on his way out <laughs> any day. Most likely, they'll play it at the end of the season. But um, I think number two for me, he's his, his, he's getting really hot because he can't make a decision at quarterback, and he's terrible play calling lately. And that's Doug Peterson. You know, the excuses out of Philadelphia just drive me nuts. And Aren't they awful? Every time they get behind so a camera bad. and a mic, they're just awful. They they just spew nonsense every time. So bad. But uh, Adam Gase aside, number one for me is Anthony Lynn. 
And I saw so many examples during the Chargers Bills game over the weekend that I was like, how is this guy still coaching right now? Yeah, I Anthony Lynn is a great story. Mm-hmm. And he's he's fun to to listen to. He's like this big motivator. Yeah. He's put together a pretty good team. Like the mm-hmm. personnel is very good on the Chargers. But the fact that he hasn't been able to coach up a winning team with that personnel, like I was going to give him the benefit of the doubt because he has a rookie in there this year. And mm-hmm. like before then it was even Tyrod Taylor just a bridge quarterback. Mm-hmm. But now the rookie's succeeding. The defense is playing well. Like you haven't had a ton of injuries. You've had a few on defense. Yep. Austin Eckler went down. But yep. I mean, you have to overcome those things. Like so the hottest the hottest one is is Anthony Lynn for me as well. Mm-hmm. I hate everything about him. Um my second one, honestly, to honest to God, you know, hear me out. Okay. Is John Harbaugh. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, John, it's kind of a newer. That's a newer one that, for me. Yeah, that's one. I see. That's one though. You gotta see what they do with the, all the coordinators too, though. Right. He he's. I don't think his seat's really burning up because you have to kind of pick and choose, go through a few other people. Mm-hmm. He's behind a couple of walls. Yeah. Before you get to him, but I feel like it's starting to simmer because you can only put so much on your offensive coordinator and some play calling. Like some of that comes from you as well. Right. He, he's been there for a couple seasons now, mm-hmm. and you really haven't seen much progression out mm-hmm. of Lamar Jackson. Like your job as a head coach is to progress your team. Yeah. Whether you call plays or not, you have to help your team move forward, mm-hmm. and he's going backwards right now. So, And then my other one was Doug Peterson as well. And he's also kind of a newer one for me yeah. because I was giving him the benefit of the doubt. I was saying get rid of Carson. Mm-hmm. But you know he has all this money behind him. It's hard yep. to get rid of a guy like Carson when he's soaking up, you know, twenty plus million dollars for the next two seasons. Like mm-hmm. not even combined, like twenty million next season, yeah. twenty million in twenty twenty two. He's just soaking up money, so he can't just say goodbye. I get it. Right. But if you want to win football games, Carson's not the answer. He's just not. Like they're throwing a new stat that I've almost never heard people talk about. And it's just inaccurate throws. Like he's leading the league in just in just bad throws, like missing your target. I didn't even know that was a stat that they keep track of <laughs> because usually that stat's probably not too egregious. They yeah. literally brought in almost a new stat just for Carson. <laughs> it's embarrassing. It really it's is. It's really bad. And then his decision making is just horrible as well. I mean that like in that interception that they and this is where Doug Peterson kind of comes in, though, too, mm-hmm. because you're down 11 points. I think at that point, I think it was 20 to nine at that point. Mm-hmm. You're down 11. You need two scores. You know, you're, you're in field goal range. You take the three points. You mm-hmm. just you just do. And maybe this yeah. is the point. It was 17 to nine. So even then, it makes it even more easy decision to just yep. kick the field goal. But yeah, being down excuse me, being down 11 points, you just kick the field goal, maybe give it back to Russell Wilson or try an onside kick, and then let your offense try and go down and make a game-winning drive. That's what 90% of the head coaches probably would have done in the league. Like yep. Doug Peterson, all right, Carson, let's go for the touchdown, and now we're like fourth and goal from the 11, 12, 13-yard line, and he <laughs> Carson just throws it directly to the safety. Like There wasn't even a guy close. I don't even know who he was trying to throw it at. I honestly have no idea. I looked back at the play. I don't know who he mm-hmm. threw it to. I have no idea. Um, Carson seeing ghosts. It's just seeing ghosts. It's horrible quarterback play over there, and it goes back to what I just said about John Harbaugh. Doug yep. Peterson's not progressing this team. No. So I think his seat is well hot as well. So, yep. There you go. I wanted to get that out there because I, I always like I always like trying to guess who's going to get fired come Black Monday. Mm-hmm. I always love trying to guess that. Or is it Black Tuesday, I guess? If you No, Black Monday. It's it's Black Monday and then you gotta wait for whoever plays Monday night football as well. Oh, well, there's no Monday night football. Oh, there's no Monday night football on. <laughs> 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 Took me a second there. It is Black Monday. 
man, if John Harbaugh got fired, that'd be pretty funny. That'd be awesome. All righty. That's all of our NFL news, unless you got something else that might have came up recently. You got any breaking news? Uh, the only thing I saw that I didn't throw in here, uh, real quick, uh, Will Fuller and Bradley Roby are missing the rest of the season for the Texans because of PID, PED violations. Um, they both posted on Instagram saying that they didn't know that they were doing the wrong thing, and they feel very ashamed of it and that they're going to be back for the 2020, 2021 season for the Houston Texans. Maybe. Well, I don't know about, I don't know about that. <laughs> that's why like, Phil Foyle didn't get hurt very much this year. Yeah, that's why he was balling. Dude was roiding <laughs> up. Don't they all say the same thing? I didn't know yeah. what I was doing was wrong. Yep. The, the, the NFL literally gives you a list. And you also have a strength and conditioning coach. I'm pretty sure you have mm-hmm. a team doctor. All of these people literally know every single thing that's on that list, especially the team doctor. Like, If you're going to take something, you ask the team doctor, can I take this? Yeah. It's not hard. If someone right. introduces you a new drug that you need to take for recovery or just right. whatever the case may be, you just ask the doctor. It's it's not a hard thing to do. That's why right. they're literally there for you. So you, you don't feel bad. You're just, you're just sorry you got caught. Let's just be honest here, Will yep. and, and Bradley. My, my parents coming in. Saying since the Super Bowl, the Eagles are 21, 21, and 1. It's not good. Yeah, that's not good. They made that run for the Super Bowl, and now they they lost it all. Yeah, it's not, it's not going to get it done. It's just not. Oh, Doug Peterson's on his way out. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Maybe not here first, but... You heard it here. <laughs> you heard it here. <laughs> All right, so we got our off the field MVP. There it is. Nice little banner change. Just there you go. Just for the people tuning in at home. Yeah. Um, off the field MVP is actually Tennessee Titans cornerback Malcolm Butler. He was named Week Eleven NFLPA Community MVP after he helped feed 600 families in need across three cities through grocery gift cards and donations for Thanksgiving. The Titans defensive back and Super Bowl champion. (laughs) I don't think we needed to throw that in there. (laughs) That seemed unnecessary. (laughs) Should have been Super Bowl MVP. That's, That's what I'm more upset about. Yeah. He he literally saves the game for the Patriots, and Tom Brady still gets MVP when he wasn't even the best quarterback on the field. Sad. Mm-hmm. But he had a specific purpose behind his charitable efforts this holiday to honor the places and people who have helped him reach this point in his NFL career. For his team, City of Nashville, Butler provided free COVID-19 testing and gift cards for 200 underprivileged families on Tuesday. For his hometown of Vicksburg, Mississippi, he distributed 200 gift cards to three local food pantries. And for his college town of Livingston, the University of West Alabama alum donated $5,000 to UWA Hunger slash Pandemic Relief Fund, which supplied 200 meals for those in need and students unable to go home for Thanksgiving. That's kind of a nifty one. And I like the the, the yeah. kind of the message behind it. Mm-hmm. These are the three cities that helped him get to where he is. That is really cool. Like not just his hometown, or not just right. Nashville, not just like college or something. Mm-hmm. That's kind of an interesting way to do that. And I read a little bit of the article that NFLPA had up on their website, and he basically said that you know without either without any three of these cities and the people in these cities i never would have gotten to the point where i'm at so and it's true yeah so i do have breaking news here just uh, <gasps> just got a notification that the ravens have boarded the plane to pittsburgh oh my we are gonna have football tomorrow Woo! <laughs> uh we're well yeah, we're one step that. closer to kickoff tomorrow at 3 40 on a wednesday that's fair. As 
The team's playing is en route to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Can Lamar play? No. I didn't think so. Okay. He's not eligible until the Cowboys game. Yeah, because I, I think the only people I saw that are eligible now are the running backs. Right, because those were the, the first days. ones to yeah. go positive, yeah. So J.K. Dobbins and Mark Ingram can play, but it's going to be RG3 versus the Steelers defense. <laughs> Have fun with that. <laughs> It'll be a long night for Ravens fans. Yeah. And, the, and the Pittsburgh Steelers are mad. Oh, they are furious. Like this is what I wrote about, and I have to post these blogs. So I didn't even post them yet. They mm-hmm. should be posted on Solo Cup Sports if anyone wants to go read them. But they'll be up on onoutofthefield dot com tomorrow. Maybe we'll see. I don't know. <laughs> so, very very <laughs> bad at this whole website management thing. <laughs> that, that was part of the reason why I chose the Steelers to win. I feel like it's mm-hmm. I feel like it's pretty obvious the Steelers are going to win. But one of my points was just these guys are mad rescheduling after rescheduling after rescheduling. This is the second time this has happened to them. Yeah. They are not pleased with the NFL. Like, what do you want the NFL to do? They're mad at the NFL, but what do you, what do you want them to do? Mm-hmm. You know, I was, I was in agreement that they moved it off of Thanksgiving. Cause I, t- I just mm-hmm. talked about that on the Tuesday before the game yeah. that it was probably going to be rescheduled, mm-hmm. But they just they just want to play, and they're going to take out all these frustrations on this team, and it's going to be <laughs> ugly. It's going to be awesome for Steelers fans. Oh, they're going to have a they're going to have a blast, <laughs> a literal blast, because mm-hmm. they're going to be blasting Ravens players. <laughs> going to kill some of them. Oh. <laughs> but that's it for that. If COVID don't kill them, I will. That's what the Steelers' motto is going into this game. <laughs> That might be some dark humor for this show. Oh. But that's, that's okay. We'll move off of the topic now and do some week 12 recap. <laughs> well, some week 12 recap and prediction at the same time. Yeah. Is this the latest of week 12 games that have ever been played? Has there ever been Wednesday night football before? I can't even say Wednesday night. Just a Wednesday football game. Has that ever happened? Maybe. I don't know. I didn't look it up to see if it was. I'm doing the it. Only I know this is literally the longest week twelve span of games or week span of games in history because it literally covers seven days. Oh, here we go. Since 1950, the only time the NFL has played a Wednesday game came during the 2012 regular season opener. The Giants and Cowboys were originally scheduled to play on Thursday, but the game got bumped to Wednesday. So that so it didn't conflict with President Obama's speech at the DNC. Ah, uh, interesting. Makes sense, huh? Well, there you go, yeah. folks. You learned something today. <laughs> if you walk away from the show with anything, it's that you now know there will be two games ever played on Wednesday for mm-hmm. the NFL. Very nifty. So our first game from week 12, we can tackle the two that happened on Thanksgiving. I mean, both of them were just, it was just, uh, oh my God. I, I did, I, uh, it's just so depressing because Thanksgiving, you just want to watch football, mm-hmm. but I didn't want to watch football. Like this, this, <laughs> it's just so hard to watch it when it, mm. when the end, end score is the Texans up 41, the Lions on 25. Deshaun Watson had a great game. Well, he threw four touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Just kind of, he just showed up and just told the NFL, I'm still a good quarterback. I can still do this. Yeah. It's just the rest of my team that sucks. <laughs> 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 it's not my fault that we're terrible. Yeah. He's got a point. He, he does, you know. Oh, he, he didn't say that. I should. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. He showed on the field. <laughs> yeah. He showed on the field that uh, basically what I just said. Yep. Mm hmm. Uh, JJ Watt actually did something productive in this game. Well, hey, this is what we said to was it Josh last week? Who I don't remember. Who oh, we who we wanted to go to Green Bay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, it was Josh because he's the Packers fan. He wanted mm-hmm. JJ Watt, and that's what we said. We said if he gets one big play, like a game, then I guess that kind of makes it worth it if you get him at the right price. Well, mm-hmm. here's his one big play a game. Yeah, he did it. He had a tip ball and then he caught it and ran it for a touchdown. 
that's a pretty big play. It's a very big play. But I, yeah. I was just talking about like a sack or like some kind of big tackle for a loss, but <laughs> that's a pretty big play. So six points is big. <laughs> he showed up on thing. I think isn't that his isn't that his thing though? Is like making big plays on Thanksgiving. They were talking about that a little bit. Is it his thing? I feel like it's his thing. Just he just kind of does something every Thanksgiving that just kind of makes you go, "Wow, it's JJ Watt." <laughs> I, don't know. I feel like I mean, we could Maybe. probably Google that too, but I'm not going to. Yeah. But the Lions, the Li- they they kept doing all this history leading up mm-hmm. to the game of why the Lions always play on Thanksgiving, how they kind of started the whole tradition of football being played on Thanksgiving. And then they go out there and do this. Like, I don't care if you're the tradition. Let's just put good football out there instead. How about that? Mm -hmm. Like, thanks for the participation all these years, Lions. Like, (laughs) it was great. You started it. You've been doing it for like 90 years. Awesome. Thank you very much. (laughs) We're going to replace your slot, though, with a game that might not suck. Is that that all right? That's all right. (sighs) When's the last time they won on Thanksgiving? That's a record I should look up. I, that's the one. I, that is one I'm going to look up. I, I don't know because I feel like they their their typical fashion is they they'll score some points. You know they'll be in a, they'll be in a lead. They'll be close in the game, and then they just blow it in the fourth quarter. All right, so it's not ter- it's it is pretty bad for a team that plays every Thanksgiving. Their record is thirty seven forty and two. Wow, they have two ties. Wow. Yeah, two ties on Thanksgiving. And Josh actually says uh, the Lions beat the Packers on a Thanksgiving one time. That's fun. Hmm. The Lions almost beat the Packers twice last year, but that's I feel like that's the craziest stat ever. Is both games last year, the Lions led for the entire game, but the Packers won after the clock expires on last second field goals. <laughs> I feel like that's the craziest oh. thing to ever it's not not to ever happen, but that's just really right. crazy. How do you suck that bad in the fourth quarter? <laughs> 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 My God. Oh. That's that's just kind of like, it's the Lions and the Chargers. Mm-hmm. It's just two teams that are defined by losing games late. I can't wait to get to the Chargers Bills games because I got, I got things to say. I, I know you oh, got boy. things to say, but I got things to say. Yeah. The Washington football team, who actually said that might be their name moving forward, they said they might just stick with that. No. I really, I really please, hope. Please not. don't. That's just they, hard to say. You don't even have, you can't even make a mascot out of that. Unless your mascot's a football. Like that, that yeah. would be your mascot. I, that's just stupid. That's boring. It's very, very boring. I don't, even, I, I don't even know who's, I don't know who said that. I don't know if it was like the owner or just some like media mm-hmm. person. I don't know. But that I, a guy got to hope not. Like for media people, like you and me, for Dan Patrick, for anyone, they just have to go out there and say, so the football team this past week, like, who, it just sounds weird. <laughs> the football team. Which football team? Which one? <laughs> they routed the Cowboys. Oh, they man, they did. Antonio Gibson, my my goodness. Three touchdown day for Antonio Gibson, the running back, as Washington beat the Cowboys forty one to sixteen. That's just that's pretty funny. I just noticed that the Texans and Washington scored forty one points. Maybe the Steelers will, will win with 41 points tomorrow. Hey, yo. They were supposed to be on Thanksgiving, too. That'd be fun. Yeah. Hey, that was really close uh, last night with the Seahawks and the Eagles. Because both times that the Seahawks and Eagles played last year, the Seahawks won 17-9. to The Eagles held up their uh, – oh, no, they didn't because they scored that late touchdown. The score was 17-9 to at one point, and then uh, – <laughs> The Seahawks kicked two more field goals, and then the Eagles had a Hail Mary crazy Richard Rodgers one-handed touchdown catch. <laughs> Stupid. Oh. But, yeah, the Cowboys still still aren't good. I don't no. know how they did what they did against the Vikings. I'll never understand, but 
you know, Washington just – because this is the second time this season Washington did this to the Cowboys, though. So it's, now it's a trend that the Cowboys yeah. don't know how to handle this new-look Washington on defense. And now Alex Smith behind center, they had no answers. Yeah. I mean, they, they didn't blow them off this bad the first time, but Washington's got – they're moving a little bit here. They're getting in a groove now. Is Ron Rivera really this good of a head coach? Like, it's, hey, it's kind of he crazy. He took Carolina to the Super Bowl. I mean, Washington was like a dumpster fire. Like, I think people are forgetting, because like, we're heading into week 13. People are mm-hmm. kind of, things like to drift out of people's heads. Mm-hmm. That's just how we are in America. That's just yeah. that's just how things work. I forgot to update our record. We'll do that later, because I forgot <laughs> to do that. Um I just I looked at my whiteboard and that crossed my mind. So don't let me forget to update that. Um, right. Yeah, I, this team, the scandals going on with you know the Snyder might have to sell the team because of everything that he's been mm-hmm. doing behind closed doors. You know the whole thing with uh, with Trent, Trent Williams, Trent, Trent Williams. Like, this team was looked at as a disgrace upon the NFL. Mm-hmm. And they might still be looked at like that. That's fine. But at least they're kind of winning football games. Mm-hmm. They're 4-7. and seven. We thought this team would be like an 0-16, 1-15 looking team. They're six, generally succeeding. They're first place in the division right now. Yeah. Hey, hey. They're rolling. Very and they got they got Antonio Gibson, great young running back. They got Terry McLaurin, great young wide receiver. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much longer Alex Smith can play the position, but he's doing it very good right now. Yeah, he is. I don't know how far they can go. I don't think they go that far this year, but next year I think will be fun. Yeah, sounds good to me. Hey, the next I didn't watch a single snap out of this game. I honestly didn't know this game happened. <laughs> I I kid you not. Yeah. I have no idea what happened in this game and have no idea it even happened. The Dolphins won 20 to 3 and I guess Fitzpatrick played quarterback. Yeah, he was there. And Sam Darnold played as well. Yep, and he's still garbage. I don't know who scored touchdowns in this game for the Dolphins. Do do you know? I th- I think Gasecki a tight end for the Dolphins, I think, had a touchdown because, you know, Patrick and Gusecki were, you know, they had a, had a good oh, relationship yeah. there. Um, that's, I think that's the only one I know of. You know, I, I briefly saw the highlights for this game. I mean, there wasn't a ton of them. You know, the biggest thing was, like, Fitzpatrick just didn't – there was no Fitz magic in this game. He he, he was definitely playing in the, the fill-in quarterback role. Like, it's – they're they're ready for Tua – and he's just a placeholder right now and not doing a very good job at it. So he I still think won. He cares. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he does either. I wish he'd go to, he should go to Cincinnati if I for anything. Oh. That'd be yeah. it's just I wanna see I do I do agree. I wanna see him go somewhere mm-hmm. that needs a quarterback, like a bridge quarterback. Yep. But the Dolphins will never let him go. No. Because they need that reliable backup, especially for an injury prone guy like Tua. Yep. Yeah, because you know he had that that weird roll up on his ankle against the Broncos, so I guess they're taking it a little bit safe and sorry, and you know let him sit this week. But I think he should be projected to come back for Week 13. But you know the Jets are just aiming for that number one overall pick with a yeah. new head coach. <laughs> they're gonna have a new quarterback. They're gonna have a new head coach. <laughs> it's gonna be great. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Um. The Patriots beat the Cardinals. Wow. Um, Because the Cardinals, they had an opportunity to take the lead when it was tied up 17-17, and uh, whoever their kicker is pulled that one, missed that that field goal to give them the lead. Zane Gonzalez. He's not that great of a kicker. He never has been. Yeah. But he missed his. Someone just really liked like this a lot. Oh, it's Josh going again. He's just spamming the like button. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the funniest pictures, the funniest pictures were after the game, you know, Nick Folk hits the game winning field goal for the Patriots. Mm-hmm. 
they pan over to Cam Newton, and he's just kind of sitting on the bench. Like they're literally like they're celebrating on the field. They won the game. He's just sitting there on the bench. Like he not even a smile on his face. I don't know what he was thinking about, but he he was not in the right mind at that point in time. And then they pan over to Kyler Murray, who obviously is just sitting on the bench like WTF, bro. Like, how did we just lose to the freaking Patriots? And their faces were virtually the same. Now, I can, you can easily dive into the mind of Kyla Murray and understanding, you know, he, I probably could have done more. You know, I probably, mm-hmm. could, I should have put us in the end zone and not, you know, settle for that field goal. You know, he, he's probably thinking he could do better. He's probably mad at Zane Gonzalez that he missed the kick, but you know, he, he can't help that. You know, you can only, you can't mm-hmm. be mad at your teammates. That's just the reality. But for Cam Newton, for Cam Newton to not be celebrating at that point in time, to kind of just be sitting there with no one around him, what's going through his head? What do you think he's thinking about at that point in time? Because that was that that was weird. It was a it, weird it reaction. Weird, yeah. Because he's normally yeah. a flamboyant guy that'd be like jumping up and down, and like that's just yeah. kind of always been his personality. Mm-hmm. But something changed this week. Maybe someone said something to him when he came off the field when they were going for the field goal. You think Bill came up to him and said something? Or Josh McDaniels did, yeah. Saying, why didn't you hit that touchdown that we had planned out? Is that what happened on like the play before? I don't even remember. I don't know. I just know. I just really, <laughs> It yeah. wouldn't surprise me if they hadn't planned up to do that and said, just take the field goal to win. But Like, after they missed the field goal for the Cardinals, he took his team down, mm-hmm. and they he got them in field goal range. It's not like he didn't do anything; like right. he got them in field goal range, and they won the game. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I feel like he's lost confidence in himself. Like I don't, because he's been saying a lot of this stuff to the media these days. I don't care about personal accolades. I don't care about this. I don't care mm-hmm. about this. I blah 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 blah. I feel like because that's kind of the Patriot way. Right. If you just stay quiet about yourself. I feel like Bill has changed Cam Newton as a human being. Mm-hmm. I feel like Bill and Joshua McDaniels have changed Cam Newton's mentality. And we kind of saw that after the game. Like, all right, we won. Let me just not react because Bill might yell at me or something. <laughs> <laughs> I it's it's tough to watch a guy that, you know, Cam Newton who used to be a fun loving go get going guy and now he's just mm-hmm. Maybe it was just he got caught up in the moment, like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I did that. But right, I wouldn't be surprised if he's kind of just – I don't want to say he's a depressed human being, but he's not entirely happy where he's at right now because he's not playing well. He's not playing with a fun organization, which has been stated by multiple players across the league. Mm-hmm. Maybe he just doesn't care that they won. Maybe he doesn't like he doesn't like, doesn't like the cold. <laughs> that too. Yeah, I want to go back to Carolina. <laughs> I just thought that was very. I thought that was very interesting. Yeah, that's that's odd. All right, the next one up was wow, what a game! Oh man, what a game! The Panthers at the Vikings, and the Vikings win it twenty eight to twenty seven on a Chad BB redemption touchdown catch. This guy. I, Earlier in the game, muffed a punt, mm-hmm. so they lost possession on that, which probably resulted in a Panthers touchdown, if I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. or just a minute they scored points. Yeah, but and you put in here that Chad Beebe is the son of Don Beebe, mm-hmm. who's a former Buffalo Bill. Did, yeah, did bad Don Beebe ever muff a punt? No, but he did chase down Leon Lett in the Super Bowl to knock the ball out of his hand before he crossed the end zone. Hey, that is that Don Beebe. He never won a game. He never won a Super Bowl with the Bills, but he did win with the with the with the Packers uh, with Favre. So I'm gonna I'm gonna got, break something to you. Yeah, no one's won a Super Bowl with the Bills. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Just want to let you know. <laughs> he left the Bills and went with a Super Bowl. So <laughs> good for him. Good. For yeah. Him. <laughs> so it, 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 Chad Beebe, he's got some greatness behind him. He got he's got some decent greatness behind him. And, for me, it just seems insane that it's someone that's from the 90s Bills. Now they're kids playing in the NFL. It just seems weird. <laughs> yeah. 
Like it makes hey, me feel super old. It's the same thing with DK Metcalf. I never watched his dad play. Uh-huh. They always they always talked about how DK's dad played. I think offensive line in the league before he got there. Mm. So seeing a lot of that these days. But I guess Don's a little bit more recent, playing in the nineties. Yeah. But yeah, he muffed a punt earlier in the game, and then goes on, becomes the hero, and catches the game-winning touchdown. And it was funny. I don't know. I don't know who the name of the defensive player was for the Panthers, but he was a rookie corner. Oh, but yep. He scored two touchdowns on defense on back-to-back offensive plays of the Vikings. Yeah, I think it's a uh, Henry Chin. Henry Chim Chin. Something like that, his last name. But I know, I know who you're talking about. He's a rookie. He's probably he should probably get rookie of the year for defense. Really? Based on he's been I, playing yeah. that well. Yeah, he's, he's been he's been playing pretty well. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And I think this two touchdowns here just uh kind of helped really get his name out there because you know playing for the Panthers, you're not on a excuse me big name team. So yeah, yeah. That, for the I mean. That was 14 points right there from him. So without those 14 points, this is a Vikings blowout. So, yeah, he tra- he almost was the hero of this game, but mm-hmm. Teddy Bridgewater didn't do enough. They missed. They're missing. It it's hard to say, but Mike Davis just didn't play as well as he has earlier in the season, and they're missing mm-hmm. missing Christian McCaffrey at this point. And Teddy Bridgewater, he looked rough coming back from injury. Mm. He missed a lot of throws. He hit a couple throws, uh-huh. but he missed a lot of throws as well. So it was kind of tough to watch that happen because they mm-hmm. they would have won this game if Teddy just would have hit one or two more of those throws. It's unfortunate. Yeah. Only lost by a point. That means all they would have had to do is turn one of those field goals into a touchdown. And they would have they would have won the game. Mm-hmm. The Browns beat the Jaguars. There's not really much here to discuss other than. The Browns, it's, God, it almost hurts to say it. It almost, it feels like the Browns are a legitimate team. Oh. It's it's tough to get those words out there. Oh. How many years now have we said, oh, the Browns are legit, they're playoff contenders, and then they flop? Too many years to count. So that's why it kind of hurts to say those words. Yeah. Because I don't want it to burn me. I don't want to say that and then they lose mm-hmm. out the rest of their games and then they don't make the playoffs or something. But it feels like when Nick Chubb and Cream Hunt are both in that game, they can beat anyone. That's what it feels like. Yeah. And as long as Baker Mayfield doesn't throw three interceptions on his 15 pass attempts, they could they can beat anyone. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it it to me it feels like Kevin Stefanski was the right choice for this Cleveland organization <clears throat> when they hired him because you know a lot of times the new coaches you see the flash in the first couple of games you know like oh it's a different team now and that's when all the hype happens and you know they're oh they're gonna they're you know they're they're contenders not pretenders and you're still seeing it from him that this team's playing more consistent later in the season. I was a little surprised when I saw the score going into the fourth quarter that the Jaguars were coming back a little bit, but you know, the Browns did enough to hold them off, you know, win those games when the other team starts to get momentum and, you know, close out the game that right there, that's, that's a trait you need on a team for a defense to be able to do that. Yeah. I've, I've liked what he has done and he's figured yeah. out what his team can do and what his team mm-hmm. can't do. I, I think, People want Baker Mayfield to be the leader, like like fans, people on the outside. Right. Everyone thinks that Baker Mayfield should be the leader because, you know, around the league, normally the quarterback is the leader and the quarterback's mm-hmm. the guy who's supposed to win you games. But nah, Kevin said, hand the ball off to Kareem and Nick, and they're going to get the job done for us. And on the defensive side of the ball, they get Miles Garrett back now. He's been out the past two weeks. He's mm-hmm. back for this coming week. He'll, he should be good for the rest of the stretch of the season. Yeah, I uh, man. Got look out. <laughs> look out <laughs> oh, for the yeah. Browns, man. Who never thought I'd say those words, but look out for the Browns. <laughs> My goodness. <sighs> but hey, but their their matchup coming up next week is gonna be a good one because the Titans oh, yeah. 
demolished. And Derrick Henry demolished the Colts. <laughs> Not the Titans. Derrick the- Henry. <laughs> Derrick Henry gave the Colts the business. Yeah, he did. Three touchdowns in just the first half, I believe it was. Mm-hmm. My goodness. 45 to 26, the Titans won. You know, I stopped paying attention to this game because it just started getting out of control. Mm-hmm. But the Colts defense is supposed to be one of the best in the league. But this is when this is here we go. This is the point in time where I eat, where I eat my words and saying Derrick Henry was going to return to bust form. But oh. this is the point in the season where last year he ran for like a thousand yards in six games. Mm-hmm. Like he's he gets stronger as the season goes yeah. on. As other teams get worn down, he gets stronger. And this is just like you put here, they're coming into form. Derrick yeah. Henry's in form. The offense is clicking. Everyone's healthy. Mm-hmm. Ryan Tannehill's making his passes. The defense is shoring up a little bit. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it could be back-to-back years in the AFC title game, except it'll be the uh, you know, the Titans and Chiefs, possibly, going, could be. going for it again. Who knows? I think the Titans probably are one of the most affordable teams in the AFC along with the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, obviously the Steelers are still there. Mm-hmm. I still have my questions about the Steelers. Mm-hmm. Probably less questions about the Steelers and the Titans, maybe. Yeah. Because the, the Titans were kind of rough there. They went on a rough stretch. Mm-hmm. But they, 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 they took care of business against their division rival. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think pretty much said everything. <laughs> All right. Titans are just rolling. And the Colts are not. Nope. <laughs> Good old Phillip Rivers. The Giants beat the Bengals. We talked about that a little bit earlier when we went mm-hmm. over the schedule. Maybe if the if the Bengals had the lead after Daniel Jones went out, the Giants probably would have lost this game. Because yeah. once, Col- once Cole McCoy came in, <laughs> 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 Yeah, uh, that, that was that was that was tough to watch. But the no Joe Burrow Bengals are just the Bengals, and that's ugly. Yeah. But the Giants won nineteen to seventeen. They pulled it out. Godspeed. <laughs> Hopefully Danny Dimes is okay. It, it, I, they said it wasn't they said it's not as serious as they as it could have been, so it's a few weeks out, but he should be back. All right. So, you know, if they can, if Colt McCoy cannot be terrible, they have a chance at staying in the division race. All righty. Here we go. The Bills beat the Chargers 27 to 17. And boy, oh boy, was Mm -hmm. it ugly. Yes, absolutely. Boy, oh boy. Let me hold on. I want to make sure I get this right. (laughs) Because I watched this game. Mm Mm-hmm. During this stretch, and I threw up in my mouth <laughs> because this was just this is just a, I don't know. All right, so here we go. It's the second quarter, mm-hmm. not the second quarter. Where's the uh, second half? What the heck? What the heck is happening here? Oh, end of the quarter second. All right, here we go. It's the second second half. Mm-hmm. So both teams score a touchdown coming out of the half. Great, mm-hmm. good, good job. And then the Bills punted. All right, cool. Well, then the Chargers go for it on fourth down. They turn over the ball on downs. Mm -hmm. Bills defense stands up. Good job. Two plays later, the Bills fumble. All right. Chargers score a field goal off of said said fumble. Josh Allen then fumbles the ball again, or someone fumbles the ball again for the Bills. on the. It was Josh, yeah. Josh Allen fumbled down. Devin Singletary was the first one. Mm -hmm. But... But the defense stands up, and the Chargers go three and out. And then mm-hmm. Josh Allen throws an, inter- <laughs> throws an interception <laughs> as soon as they get the ball back. Yep. Fear not, folks. The Chargers get the ball back, and they throw an interception, <laughs> which then leads to a Bills field goal and then the end of the game. Yeah. Now, when I say it out loud like that, it doesn't sound as bad. But at the speed that mm-hmm. these turnovers happened, 
it's like I'm watching the Red Zone channel. And they go to another game. It's like, all right, update with the Bills. Another turnover. All right, go back to like, all right, another turnover. All right, okay, it's another turnover. Like, stop, thirty. What are you doing? Stop. Uh, yeah, I, I cursed a lot at the TV during that that part of the game. <laughs> Jesus, that was hard to watch. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted to say about this game. But real quick, strikeout mm-hmm. beer is in the house. Woo! Whether that's Rapid Dave or part-time nerd Allen, we may never know. But Strike Out Beer's here. Don't worry. You're not late. We still got like 50, 40 minutes left. You're not late. You're good. You're yeah. here You're here for the home stretch. But tell me what you thought about the Bills. Charging. So besides being, being a very ugly game, you know, Bills offense – they did a couple of trick plays. You know, great. They didn't, you know, they didn't have to rely, rely on Josh Allen completely to carry them through this game. You know, one thing I think that they can take away for sure is that the run game is moving. You know, Devin Singletary had a, a pretty decent day. I don't think he broke a hundred, but he was in the eighties. I want to say, you know, Zach Moss, you know, he had himself a, himself a good day with at least 60 yards, you know, a little bit in the passing game. And, you know, that's something that we needed to see for the last 11 weeks. And we're just finally seeing in week 12 that, you know, they can be a more balanced offense. So I was glad to see that. The Bills could have lo- should have lost this game many times because the Chargers had – so many they had so many opportunities in the fourth quarter to, to come back and take the lead and win, but Anthony Lynn cannot manage the time clock, the game clock at all, and he needs to. When you have rookie quarterback, a rookie, a rookie quarterback out there, the rookie quarterback is learning the speed of the speed of the game. He's you know he's trying to see a different defense for the uh, in live. Um, as compared to practice on tape, you need that head coach to be like, all right, we're going to take a timeout here. Let's regroup. Let's get your head in the game. Like Check in with your quarterback. Move on. So many missed opportunities by the Chargers to move down the field, spike the ball, take a timeout, move up, get to the sideline. They were down by 10 points, and they were still trying to go for a touchdown with five seconds left in the game. The game's over. <laughs> and you're trying to score a touchdown when you could have scored that a minute and a half ago and tried to go for the onside kick to give yourself the t- chance to get the game winning game tying or game winning points. So as soon as that, that happened, I'm like the, you know, this is just it. The chargers are going to be the chargers and Anthony Lynn is on. He just wrote himself off that team by the terrible clock management here. Just absolutely insane. The amount of field goals they could have had that they left by going for it on fourth down is insane. He, there's, you know, a big thing now with football coaches is analytics. He's too much on analytics and not just thinking and seeing what's on the field, what's happening. All right, we're in field goal range, three and out. All right, kick a field goal. Get the points. Points win the game, not analytics. And that goes back to earlier in the season. I don't know what episode it was, Uh but it was what something came off the Dan Patrick show that you want to be dating analytics, not Mm -hmm. married to them. Yep. Because that's exactly what it is. And Pete Carroll's struggling with that right now. Yep. And we got we got beers and fire in the chat. Oh yeah. Beard fire. That beer looks so good. There's no that emoji has no business looking that good. Um, Pete Carroll's having that kind of issue right now because hmm. Pete Carroll was the opposite way. Pete Carroll was the guy. It's like, oh well, it's fourth down. No matter the situation, we can't go for it. And now mm-hmm. he's starting to listen to some of the analytics, and it showed right. on it showed on on Monday night mm-hmm. that there's a couple fourth down situations where, okay, well. I I wouldn't go for it, but let's see what my guy upstairs is saying. Okay, we could go for it. Okay, Russell, we're going to go for it. All right, well, here's the play. And now we have to call a timeout because it took too long. That happened right. multiple times. Yep. 
I'm getting Snapchats. I just I just re-downloaded Snapchat this week for fun. Oh yeah. I don't know why. I think I just deleted mine. It I'm, finally I'll, has been the thirty days to delete it, so I think it's finally deleted. I think I'm gonna delete it sometime soon, but it takes thirty days, so it takes now. thirty days to delete. Yeah, because you have to like suspend your account. And then say you want to delete it, like they're like, oh, okay, well, we'll suspend your account for 30 days. If you want to reactivate it within the 30 <laughs> days, you can come back. But if not, we'll let you know when it gets closer to time to delete your account. And we'll just let you know when we delete it. And then then you're good to go. Like they like give you the amount, so many opportunities to come back to it when really it's like, I don't use this anymore. I get random snaps from Team Snapchat and I don't have any friends on there. So uh, uh, no. <laughs> You know, you get you get your Halloween Snapchat, yeah, Thanksgiving Snapchat. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that got off topic. But Pete Carroll's just <laughs> having Pete Carroll's just having that struggle right now, mm-hmm. and we saw that in the first quarter. If you if anyone watched the Monday Night Football game, first quarter was horrendous by Pete Carroll. Oh yeah, horrendous play calling, and we'll get to that game a little bit later, but. Uh, the next up was the Falcons absolutely just curb stomping the Raiders forty three to six. I don't know what the Raiders were doing. I have no idea what they were thinking. What their game plan was? It wasn't I, good. Nothing no. was done correctly. It, it really wasn't. I I didn't see any really highlights except for Derek Carr just getting obliterated and the ball coming out of his hand as a fumble, and then the Falcons taking it back to the other end of the field. Yeah, that was all I saw. <laughs> I mean, there's not much. There's not much here to see. <laughs> Derek Carr got demolished the entire game, not just that one time. Yeah, Josh Jacobs could get nothing going. It, mm-hmm. And this is what I would like to see out of the Falcons' offense more often, because mm-hmm. they have the ability to do this. They didn't even have Julio Jones for this game, and they still scored 43 points. This offense has the ability to do this whenever they want, but sometimes yeah. they choose not to, and I don't understand why. Mm-hmm. That's really the only takeaway I have. The 49ers beat the Rams. On a game-winning field goal. I mean, I'm thankful because this gave Seattle the sole lead of first place in the NFC Mm -hmm. West. But this is not a game the Rams should have lost. And again, here we go. This is just... Last week, Jared Goff was amazing. They had no mm-hmm. run game against the Bucks, but Jared Goff, he just, they still had play action. They were doing whatever they wanted. Jared Goff could hit any, he could have been covered by the entire defense. I'm pretty sure Jared Goff still would have hit his wide receiver if he was covered by 10 guys mm-hmm. in the Bucks game. He was just electric. Against the 49ers, they had no run game again. But this time he looked like the Jerry Goff we all know and love. Who, if he doesn't have a run game, he's just <laughs> throwing interceptions left and right. He can't hit a, he couldn't hit the side of a barn. Uh, the broad side of a barn is the saying. Yes. <laughs> and this is, I'm just confused by that because mm-hmm. it's not like he had he had a run game this game. He didn't have a run game because that's what I normally lean on mm-hmm. is the fact that he does have a run game. And this time he did he had a run game neither time, but for this game he just decided he wanted to suck eggs. Well, I think it's also too like Kyle Shanahan just knows how to beat the Rams. The Rams just don't have any good luck with the 49ers in the past couple seasons. Well, that's fair. I mean, it's like it's the kinda... 49ers have the number, so and it's like the it's the same way with the Seahawks when they play the Rams. No matter how bad they are, you know, it's the Seahawks mm-hmm. can't get past the Rams usually. Mm-hmm. So I understand that, but it's just it's I guess that's just the NFL. That's just the side of the NFL that you can't put numbers on. Yep. You just have to put it on the fact that Jared Goff can't beat the Niners. It's yep. <laughs> just the reality. <laughs> it's sad. Mm-hmm. I mean, Debo Samuel played well. Nick Mullins is a pretty decent quarterback. I think our friend Danny Boy would appreciate Nick Mullins being the full-time starter and not Jimmy G. Mm-hmm. Jimmy Garoppolo. no. <laughs> They're starting to get pieces back here and there, but not nearly enough to be competitive against other teams. Right. At least they have Robbie Gold. My yeah. God. Um, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> there. Let me make this perfectly clear. 
No quarterbacks played in this game. I want to make that entirely <laughs> clear. No quarterbacks played in this game. The Saints beat the Broncos 31-3. to And I actually think this hit the over. No, maybe not. I think the line set at the beginning of the game was 34 and a half. So I think this barely mm. hit under. Because that's yeah. what everyone was screaming. You have to bet the under. But they Vegas made it tough. Like I think it was I think it was thirty four and a half. Um but I think what um the quarter the practice squad wide receiver that played behind center for the Broncos, mm-hmm. he was one of nine for mm-hmm. thirteen yards and two interceptions. Yeah. So he, he had more interceptions than completions. And then Taysom Hill also had an interception himself. Mm-hmm. They were effective on the ground, yeah. which is what we'd expect out of a Taysom Hill led offense. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just—it's just a game that probably—I <laughs> don't want to say shouldn't have happened because, <laughs> like, as long as the team is not like in a Ravens or Titans situation, the game right. should, the game should be played. Yeah, and it's think- unfortunate. Right, and that was the biggest thing a lot of Broncos fans were crying about was why is the NFL not shutting this game down? They're making them play it when they're postponing the Ravens Steelers game for so many. Well, the issue is with why it played was because the Bron- the quarterback room was contained, the spread was contained in the organization versus the Ravens. They can't keep one guy off the COVID list. It's like they keep adding. I mean, hopefully. Bearing any news tomorrow morning will be good for tomorrow night. But, yeah, the quarterbacks made the wrong decision coming in on their off day, did not follow social distancing procedures, did not have masks on, and it bit the team in the butt. It just shows you how quick you could hit, though. All it took was one session Mm -hmm. of not social distancing and not wearing your mask and and COVID hit you. Like and there was, I thought it was just kind of fun. Um, a lot of Broncos fans said, or a lot, of, I think it was even some players said, you know, this is the NFL making an example of us, saying we have to play on our scheduled time. Like we're not going to push your game for you because you messed up. We're going to make an example of you. Mm-hmm. I don't think that was the NFL's initiative. It's an interesting point. You can right. talk about it if you want to talk about it. I will entertain that thought. Mm-hmm. Because I think it was just it wasn't on a pandemic level, you know, your entire team wasn't infected like we just said. But right. it's an interesting point, you know. If you're not going to yeah. follow the rules, put your players to the side and play your game. Godspeed, next man up. Yep. And we and we saw how well next man up worked <laughs> for the Broncos. <laughs> Don't want to play that game. Nope. The Chiefs beat the Bucks twenty-seven to twenty-four. I, I I was surprised it was that close. Yeah, it was. I saw, the, I saw the final score and I was like, holy crap, mm-hmm. they almost won. But I I would guess that they didn't actually almost win, I would assume. Yeah, they, they didn't did almost win. So. Yeah, I didn't it was so. kind of like those things where the Chiefs were still moving. They were still moving down the field, but like the Bucks were like, they get a touchdown or like a, or something. They get a good play every other series or so, but they weren't being productive. And you know, a lot of people are looking at that offense. As well, why is Tom Brady struggling so bad? Like, you know, Father Time is catching up to Tom Brady. Yes, it is catching up to him, but it's not all on the offense. Granted, the offense is a hot mess a little bit with Bruce Arian's system and the amount of wide receivers that can't follow the routes correctly, and Tom Brady can't hit them like he can't hit the broad side of a, broad side of a barn. I heard an interesting take last night that the defense. It's actually something that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers should be worried about because that secondary gave up 200 yards to Tyreek Hill in the first quarter. I mean, I don't know what you – how do you even let that happen? <laughs> I don't understand. They single covered him so many times, and as soon as Mahomes sees that, oh, there's Tyreek. There's a touchdown. Hey, uh, if as soon as a guy hits 100 yards in the first mm-hmm. quarter – you'd start doubling him every play and let Patrick go somewhere else. You don't yeah. continue to let him tear you apart in that one spot. Mm-hmm. The fact that he allowed that to happen, I don't know if that's Bruce Arians' call. I don't know who the defensive coordinator is. Todd Bowles. Todd Bowles. That's just that's <laughs> embarrassing. Good old Todd. Yeah. 
<laughs> another another former jet. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you know, that was I guess to be expected. Yeah. The Chiefs were probably supposed to win that game. And now Patrick Mahomes is beating Tom Brady. Well, I think he's his record against Tom Brady's three and one. Yeah, I think so. The takeover continues. One goat mm-hmm. to the next. Yep. I don't know if we're gonna go that far, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> oh yeah. The Packers dismantled the Bears. Mm-hmm. I don't know what you want me to say here. I already said I didn't watch this game, but there wasn't mm-hmm. much to watch. There really wasn't. The Bears were they struggled. I'm surprised they were even able to score twenty five points in garbage time because and it's something I kinda of put here in the notes is you know, the Packers were basically on a Sunday drive. Sunday night drive playing the Bears because they were just on cruise control for the most of the game. Like Aaron Rodgers did his thing, scored the touchdowns he need to, defense did its job, win the game. This is what I kind of expected to. The way the Bears yeah. have been playing as of late, they had no hope. There was nothing there was yeah. nothing here to give Bears fans any hope of winning this game. I'm surprised at how they started five and one. Yeah. With yeah. Mr. Trubisky. Well, and then slash Nick Foles, and they brought Mitch Trubisky back because Nick Foles is still, you know, bummed with that hip injury. Yeah, Trubisky's not not staying on this team after the season's over. No, they're riding with Nick Foles from here on out. They might bring in yeah. someone else because Nick Foles is they've seen injury prone. But mm-hmm. and then last but not least, the Seahawks and the Eagles, twenty three to nine. You know, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but you know the Seahawks' play calling was an absolute joke. Now, the Seahawks, for some reason, love throwing the ball behind the line of scrimmage, although they have no one with the athletic ability to actually break it, break for a big one <laughs> when you do said thing, whether yeah. it's a wide receiver screen or some kind of running backs, whatever the case may be. They just love playing behind the line of scrimmage. But then as soon as they decide, all right, Russell, we're done playing that game, go ahead and throw it down the field. He's completing 50 plus yard bombs to DK Metcalf. Hmm. I mean, he's just doing like let Russell throw the I'm not I don't want to even say let Russ cook because right now they're running a very balanced offense, which mm-hmm. is what I love. They're right. they're running the perfect balanced offense of running and passing, and that's great to see. But when your passing play calls are garbage, mm-hmm. that that's the part that needs to change now. And now you need to let Russell call his own passing plays. Let him find the guy downfield. Let him get open. You have DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. One of them's going to be open pretty much every play. Mm-hmm. That's just the reality of it. You can, and Russell Wilson's version of open is different than our, like other people's <laughs> version of open. One of them yeah. is going to have a half step on someone else and Russell will drop that ball in there for them. Mm-hmm. So I'm just, I'm just sick of, yeah. I'm sick of these, play calls from Seattle and that's whether that's mm-hmm. Pete Carroll or Brian Schottenheimer one of them needs to just get out of the way and run Russell calls own plays <laughs> and after oh. the Eagles Carson Wentz just sucks we already talked about Doug Peterson yeah. on the hot seat stuff like that yeah yeah it was just I don't know how Carson Wentz does anything on the field the way I saw him play last night it was bad he just misses open receivers yeah. He just doesn't know where to put the ball. And then there's multiple scenarios where he throws a ball downfield and he's underthrowing his receivers because he's just not shifting his weight. He's not he's not even doing normal quarterback stuff that mm-hmm. any starting quarterback in the NFL knows to do, like shifting your weight when throwing the ball downfield. Mm-hmm. He's just throwing he's just throwing like eh, like nonchalant like he's just in the backyard. Let me just toss right. it up here and he's he's missing open receivers. Mm-hmm. Hard to watch. Sad. Uh, still to be played is the Ravens and Steelers. We kind of kind of hit on that. I don't know. The Steelers are going to win. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be RG3 time down there for the Ravens, and it's going to be ugly. So since we're already looking rough on time, because that's what yeah. happened, <laughs> um, we're going to go straight into our Week 13 preparation and predictions. And mm-hmm. honestly, this should be pretty easy because we only disagree on one game. Right now, yeah. Right now. <laughs> All picks are subject to change come Sunday. <laughs> as as per usual. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and the Bucks and the Panthers are on their bye week this week, which is the last of the bye weeks. Mm-hmm. There's no Thursday game because of the Wednesday night game between the Ravens and the Steelers. And we have a slew of Monday night games and also a Tuesday game next week. So that, yeah. that'll be fun. So the first one on the docket is the Browns at the Titans. Mm-hmm. This is, you know, that there was two games I struggled with picking. Mm-hmm. And this was one of them. Like I just got done saying the Browns should be able to keep up with anybody. It's going to be two teams with great running games. Yep. And let's say the running game like kind of cancels each other out and it comes down to the play of the quarterback to make that throw that needs to be thrown. I'm mm-hmm. going to put my money in Ryan Tannehill's basket before I put it in Baker Mayfield's. So that's why I picked the Titans. Yeah. Yeah, this was a tough one for me to pick, too, when I was looking at it earlier. I don't know. I just feel like as good as the Browns are right now, I don't think the Browns' defense can stop Derrick Henry. I think Derrick Henry, like, Derrick Henry has run over defenses that are top 15 at least. Yeah, Colts are like top 5, maybe top 10, but like yeah. they're a very good defense, and he, he steamrolled like the, them. The only team that's the only defense that stopped him is the Steelers. And that wasn't even, I mean, they stopped him, but, you know, his stats were still, for a normal running back, was okay. Pretty good day, especially when you consider it's the Steelers. Yeah. So that's that's where I pick the Titans. I do like your point with the offenses. You know, take away the run game, who's passing. I don't trust Baker Mayfield. I'll take Ryan Tannehill. The Titans, I feel like have a they have such a good play action, mm-hmm. play calling scheme that you have to you just trust them more. Yeah, hundred percent, and that's yeah that's why I'm taking the Titans. My parents, Wentz doesn't see open receivers just constantly, and they showed a great example of that last night. At one point, he had a he had a tight up tight end up the seam for like a twenty yard gain, and instead Carson Wentz dropped it to some guy in the sideline that he didn't hit. <laughs> that's just what it is Carson's just yeah. not who he used to be mm-hmm. Raiders at the Jets okie dokie <laughs> taking the Raiders I, I know we just got done watching the Raiders get destroyed by the Falcons yeah. but guess what the Jets aren't the Falcons nope <laughs> by any there's stretch, no yeah. offense for those Jets so the Raiders should have a nice bounce back week yeah they should be fine the Jaguars at the Vikings. You know, the Jaguars didn't look bad last mm-hmm. week. They they kept up, kind of, you know, a couple of garbage time points. Mm-hmm. But I, I would like to think the Vikings keep their momentum. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how much momentum they have. Something. <laughs> but they have a win last week. We'll just go off right. of that. But I think they should be able to keep going against the, the freaking Jaguars. Yeah, I, I I agree. I mean, I feel like the fact that the cop or the Browns put up all those points, but pretty much, bef- you know, early ish in the game, and then the Jaguars slowly, slowly creep back up in garbage time. Right. I don't think that might. Ha- I don't think that happens as much with the Vikings. I think if the Vikings can control the time of possession with the offense and let Dalvin Cook just eat away at that time clock and, you know, wear down that defense to the Jags, I think that's how the Vikings are going to win. And Dalvin Cook should be healthy by all reports. Yeah. He went out for a little while, banged up, but he should be good to go. So there shouldn't be any concerns with that, if anyone Mm -hmm. thought there might be. Uh, the Bengals at the Dolphins. The Bengals are just no longer the Bengals of Joe Burrow yeah. times. They're back to being the Bengals of before Joe Burrow. So I will, I will be fine taking the Dolphins in this one, no matter who the quarterback is. Yeah, I'm taking the Dolphins too. You know, this this if this was Burrow versus Tua, this would have been a great matchup to televise. Would have been a prime time one. Would, oh, have been a, would have been something you have to tune into. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. But this is, is not. <laughs> we might not even get to it. Who knows? We could get Fitz we, Magic we against not. Finley or whoever they're putting behind center. Oh, uh, Brandon Allen. Oh, Brandon Allen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather take Finley. 
<laughs> but yeah, Dolphins defense, I think helps Fitzpatrick out this week with the Bengals offense struggling. So Dolphins it is. All righty. And then the Colts at the Texans, you know, you, if you would like to think of a game, yeah, like I always say, there's always a game that trips up a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And if I had to pick one that trips people up, it might be this one. Uh, so I'm still taking the Colts. Mm-hmm. I've liked what I've seen Deshaun Watson do, but now he's missing Will Fuller, which mm-hmm. was his number one guy. So that's going to hurt a lot. Yep. So I'm going to take the Colts to be able to lock down whatever wide receivers Deshaun Watson has left, and then it just, it's just kind of a mess after that. Yeah. I mean, I think that the Colts defense, I think, is a lot better than the Lions defense. So the Texans shouldn't be able to put up, shouldn't be able to put up as many points against the Colts defense as they did against the Lions on Thanksgiving. But also the Colts have a thing. They do a thing where they, they, they they're a bounce back team after a, a bad loss like that. You know, I, they, I feel like they did it earlier in the season. Um, you know, Philip Rivers didn't finish the game because they were losing so bad, you know, put Brissett in there for a little bit. I think the Colts are going to get right again. And I think with the Will Fuller missing for the Deshaun Watson, it's going to make the Texans struggle a little bit more. They have bounced back from all their losses. They lost to the Jaguars in week one, and then they won three straight. They lost to the Browns. Then they bounced back and beat the Bengals and Lions. Lost to the Ravens. They bounced back and beat the Titans. Mm-hmm. So this could be a good bounce back game for the, yeah. against a division opponent, too. Mm-hmm. Um, the Lions and the Bears. This is our difference. Yeah. I am picking the Bears. Mm-hmm. I'm picking the Bears because I actually wrote an article. My betting article included this matchup. Mm-hmm. And the reason I'm taking the Bears is because the Bears have won the last five matchups against the Lions. They seem to have some kind of luck against the Lions. And now the Lions are also missing their head coach. They're kind of they're kind of in pieces right now. After getting dismantled on Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. I feel like momentum, they have no momentum. Morale is low. Morale is low for the Bears, too. But, you know, you saw Matt <laughs> Nagy come out and basically call out his team for being a bunch of, you know, terrible people <laughs> that don't yeah. <laughs> that don't care about winning football games. But right. I, I just feel like there's more talent around the Bears it's not that's not really saying much, but I just like the matchup history and I like the defense from the Bears. Okay. Yeah, I mean, as of right now, I'm taking the Lions. My thought was, you know, they fire Matt Patricia. You get an interim head coach. We're we're gonna do that interim coach hot start spark to the team. And they'll they'll get a, a win out of here. I didn't know that they were the Bears were five and zero against the Lions the last five times, so that's surprising. Here's one thing that's the, the you know the Bears and the Lions are going down a similar road right now. the The Lions have already imploded, and now it's time to rebuild a little bit. You know, get what they can out of the season. So you know they're just they're you're playing they're playing for football. The Bears are on the verge of absolute meltdown and the time is ticking faster and faster and faster before this team implodes, you know, and then Matt Nagy calls the team out and says we're basically in panic mode. Like we can't get the job done. What are we doing? That's your, that's, that's your problem there, Matt Nagy. You're the head coach. <laughs> Do your job. And so, calling out your team publicly is probably not the answer. Right. You know, as much Talk as the, about a head coach on a hot seat, tell you yeah, <laughs> as much as the Texans blew out the Lions, it seemed a little bit more of a a later in the game. You know, the Texans just kept rolling. You know, quick couple, couple of quick scores. The Lions weren't able to kind of grind it out, which you know puts it falls back on Matt Stafford. You got to get the air to the ball through the air. Um, there's no uh, not run game was kind of there, not great, but I think the. Right now, I'm taking the Lions to win the game. Just a gut feeling. All right. I mean, that's kind of, you know, Josh said that both the Lions and Bears are trash. 
Bears have a top five defense. Yeah, they're both trash. It's just a game that could go either way. It's, yeah. it's, it's tough to pick. That's why I went off of history. Yeah. <laughs> that's, I, that's the only way I, I'm picking that one. <laughs> the Saints at the Falcons. You know, the Falcons looked good last week. Maybe they found a rhythm with their offense, and mm-hmm. the Saints are lacking in offense right now for the most part. They don't have a passing offense at least. Mm-hmm. But just I, I'm not even paying attention to the offenses at this point. Mm-hmm. After watching what the Saints defense did to Matt Ryan in their first matchup a couple weeks ago, I'm just banking on that happening again. And Matt Ryan and this offense don't know how to handle that kind of pressure. And the Saints just yeah. pull out another win. Yeah. I mean, that, that last game they played was with Taysom Hill. Yeah. So, you know, the, the Falcons have already seen it from the Saints. And the defense, you know, kept the Falcons in check, and they just didn't let them. They just couldn't score. So as long as the Saints' offense gets enough done, you know, that should be an easy win for the Saints. The NBA just came out with their Christmas schedule. Ooh, that's uh, that's nice. Lakers versus Mavs. Oh, and my screen went black. I'm too lazy to turn it back on. All right, <laughs> the Giants at the Seahawks. Sorry, Giants. The Seahawks are winning. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, no Danny Dimes. Yeah, no, that's going to be – that's going to hurt. Uh, the Rams yeah. at the Cardinals. Potential to be a good game. I'll, whenever yeah. you just see an NFC West matchup this season, you just think it's just going to be a great game. Mm-hmm. Two teams that are fighting to try and get back on top of the NFC West. The Cardinals seem like they're fading now, especially with that loss uh, – to the the Patriots, I think the Cardinals just kind of keep spinning downward. I don't think they know what's happening right now. Mm-hmm. I feel like they're in this funk. The fact that you couldn't get past the Patriots, you know, you lost to the Seahawks. Yeah. That kind of hurts. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go with the Rams, but both teams are coming off bad losses. But at least the Rams have a lick of momentum. Like they're yeah. close. They're right behind the Seahawks. They're one game behind mm-hmm. instead of two. They beat the Bucks, so they know they can win games. Mm-hmm. I just, I just like, I just like what I'm seeing from the Rams right now. I haven't seen anything from the Cardinals. The Cardinals have only won one of their last four games, I think. Yep, and that was, was because of a hail mary. Mm-hmm. So they have not looked good in a while. No, they, they, they had a good spark, and then they just aren't staying consistent and I don't know how Kyler Murray is as cocky as he is as a quarterback because he can't he literally has to lean to his side to throw the ball so he can see like how <laughs> like that takes some cojones there yeah. to be able to play quarterback at being that short I'm as tall as Kyler Murray and I have no want nothing to do with playing quarterback <laughs> the people standing in front of him are like six foot six yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how he does it. Cardinals are the most bipolar team, says Josh. Without that miracle win against the Bills, they're fin- Yeah. Yeah. That's true. If they didn't have that win, they'd be five and something, I think. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they're they're kind of lucky to be in the position they're in. Uh, the Patriots at the Chargers. Here's another kind of weird one, you know. This one could go either way if you want, if you think the Patriots can keep some kind of momentum going after their big Mm -hmm. win against the Cardinals. If they want to, maybe they're trying to fight back that seventh seed in the FC is, I don't think they, I think that's well out of reach with all the teams that are doing well in the AFC. If they were in the NFC, I'd say maybe, but Mm -hmm. the AFC, probably not. Uh, I'm going to take the chargers probably just because it's in LA, but I I could see the Patriots doing something weird. I'm I'm pretty confident in my Chargers pick. Yeah, I I think being back in LA, it's a more comfortable field for the Chargers. I'm kind of going on climate here a little bit. You know, they were in the coldish in Buffalo. If this was if this was, if this was in New England, I'd probably pick the Patriots. Yeah, the East Coast by looks of Durf Doppler is like you got a lot of flurries and cold weather yeah. kind of floating around the East Coast. Yeah. So the fact that they're in LA, I think the Patriots snuck out a one. And with the fact with like 
you know, kind of like what Josh is saying here with the Cardinals being bipolar, they're the Patriots snuck out that snuck that one out against the Cardinals. It probably doesn't happen against a Cardinals team that played as well against or played as well as in like the second half of the Seahawks game that went to overtime. Right. So I think the Patriots, you know, they get these little glimmers of hope and then they go the next week and then the team just squashes them. And I don't think the Chargers are going to squash them, but I think the Chargers still win. The Chargers will squash them for three quarters and then it'll, (laughs) it's anyone's game in the fourth. The Eagles at the Packers. All right. Yep. Go take, pack, go. Gonna take the Packers on that one. That's going out on a limb here. <laughs> and then our Sunday night football game, the Broncos at the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. I think the Broncos have a quarterback. Do they available. have a quarterback? Yeah, I think they, they said three out of four. Yeah, because it was go. yeah, just just a Jeff. Driscoll tested positive. The rest of them were close contact, so they that's why they had to quarantine. As long as they're negative tests, they should have a quarterback back. God only knows which one it'll be, but they'll have one. <laughs> it'll probably be Drew if he's healthy. Probably, yeah. Does he still have a shoulder? I don't even know what's going on with Drew. Who knows? I don't, I don't know. Uh, the Chiefs are going to win that one. Yep. Washington football team at the Steelers on the pushed back game, short week, Monday night football. It's it's an interesting – It's you can consider mm-hmm. Washington winning this game. I'm not going to give them the win. I'm picking the Steelers. Okay. But talk about, talk about a game that could be a trap for the Steelers. A short week yeah. coming off of a weird Wednesday game throws off their entire practice schedule. They don't like, – it's, mm-hmm. it's just a weird week going forward. And then you have to play a, I believe the Washington defense is fourth in the league mm-hmm. in total defense. This could be a tough one for the Steelers to bang out because their offense is not as great as people think it is. You know, Deontay yeah. Johnson and Chase Claypool have their moments, but mm-hmm. James Conner is not who he used to be. He's not the guy who came out of the scene back in, I think, 2018 when he mm-hmm. had almost a thousand yard season. You know, Juju Smith Schuster's non existent. He's kind of taken over that quarter that wide receiver one role where he just gets doubled and everyone else is open. Yep. I don't know. I'm gonna take the Steelers and I'm gonna leave it as the Steelers, but man, it's just just be careful. Just be careful. All right. I, I'm taking the Steelers. I you know I think it's gonna be a great matchup. I just don't quite see the Washington's offense be overly more successful against the Steelers defense and the Steelers offense is against the Washington's defense. And, uh, and, you know, we know that Washington's defense, you know, they're getting better as the season is going on. Chase Young is coming into, into form for that team. You know, it's, that's why he was a first, uh, second overall pick in this past year's draft. I think the Steelers are more disciplined than Washington, and that's why I'm taking the Steelers. They're going to play like crazy tomorrow against the Ravens. You know, if this game is if this game is for sure played, if it's not played, I don't know if Washington wants to show up on Monday. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, 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 no. That'd be bad. Yeah, if this game is for some reason postponed again to like week eight, week eighteen. Yeah. That's a lot of built up frustration, and I would not want to be in the path of that. <laughs> and then we got the Bills at the 49ers for the second Monday night game. Mm-hmm. You know, as much as, as well as the 49ers played against the Rams, mm-hmm. you know, we talked about the Rams just kind of, the 49ers just kind of have the Rams number. Mm-hmm. Um, that might have been the only reason they won because right. they still. Raheem Moster is all they got at running back. Debo Samuel is all they got at wide receiver. And then after that, it's a struggle fest. Mm-hmm. They're not even playing at home. They have to go to this like a weird road game, home game hybrid. Mm-hmm. I think the Bills will just be ready to come in here and take care of business. 
They because like you were talking yeah. about, they're finding a balance on offense. Things just seem to be mm-hmm. clicking right now. The Bills look consistently good. Mm-hmm. I would say on offense. Yep. So I I'd like to think they can come in here and dismantle a practice squad defense. Yeah, I would. I would like to hope so. <laughs> like the <Yeah>. hope. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, taking the Bills here. All right. And then last but not least, on Tuesday night, the Cowboys at the Ravens. This is the other one I struggled with. Mm-hmm. Not going to lie. This is the one where I had to sit there for a minute. Do I really trust the Cowboys, though, to do enough to get past the Ravens? The Ravens' offense is really struggling, mm-hmm. but let's not act like <laughs> the Cowboys' offense isn't struggling <laughs> either. If they're both going to be bad, I'm going to put my trust in the Ravens' offense just a touch more. Mm-hmm. Then I'm gonna put trust in the Cowboys offense. Yeah. I don't feel good about it, but I mean no. <laughs> you know, either we, way we, it's... we talked about the Browns Titans being a game, you know, a good go either way. Don't feel it took a little bit a second to pick it. Same with this game. I was like, Ugh. you know, if Lamar's not back, if he doesn't pass every, all his tests to be back for Tuesday, I take the Cowboys if Lamar is not there. That's fair. Yeah. But I'm right now I'm taking I'm thinking Lamar's gonna be back. I'm gonna take the Ravens. All right. Yeah. That's that'd be a thing to keep an eye on is who's available and who's not for the Ravens for that mm-hmm. game. It might still not matter, but all right, real quick before we end the show, let's do some math here. So let's okay. see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen games. 16 games were played in week 12. Yep. Well, well, 15 were played. Yeah. So let's, <laughs> let's see here. Let, mm-hmm. so th- these are my picks. I got one. These are the ones I got. This is how many I got right. Okay. All right. We got Houston one. So one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine ten, so that means ten and five for the week. Yep. All right, and then we still we still got the Steelers tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So ten and five, and then we got Durf's picks. We got one. Uh, I think two. we all match, so it should I be think, the same. By the looks of it, I think it is all the same. So we're both went ten and five. All right, so okay. not much is going to change up here. So I'm still game behind, but. Yeah, it's going to be you at 112 and 62. Did you write that down? Yep. All right. And then I'll be at 113 and 61. One. Okay. Still one game behind. And then we both have the Steelers tomorrow, so that's not going to really change anything either. And then one of us, we could be tied after week 13 because our only difference right now. Is mm-hmm. the Bears Lions if everything stays as it is, right? So if you, if you get if the if the Lions win, we could be tied again heading into Week 14. Ooh, saucy, saucy. All right, and I believe that's our show. We pretty much nailed it right at the two hour mark. Yeah, buddy. Even after all of the off track that we got on at the beginning of the show, we still managed to hit our two hour mark. That's incredible. Thank you for being here. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the comments. And, you know, make sure you go to onoffthefield.com. Um, keep, make sure you're following on social media because we are going to do a giveaway thing. Mm-hmm. A big, we're going to do a, a the December giveaway, but I didn't have enough of it planned out to really announce on the show. So I just got to, I'm hoping to get it done tomorrow to actually put something out on social media. We'll probably, I'll probably do like a quick live show on social media Mm -hmm. just to get the ball rolling. So happy December, everybody. Let's have a good month. Let's close out 2020 with a bang, but for Durf and Dylan, we'll be back next week because mama didn't raise no wussies.